This is Bitluni and today I'll be using some old dumpster gardening tools and an AC battery backpack to conquer my jungle in the backyard. This video is sponsored by Baseos. I mentioned my backyard jungle in my recent videos and I really need to get the overgrow under control somehow as there are still undiscovered parts. Safety I own a few that. cool gardening tools that I bought years ago but still missing the most of the others. In lack of monetary resources, I'm currently reliant on old ass tools from Craigslist or those I found in a dumpster. All right. One tool I found here in the shed was this old rusty lawnmower. The motor was locking up, so I decided it might be serviceable and I took it apart. I thought the bearings were rusty, but what I found was this strange clutch or brake. It seems to be retracting when the AC motor is powered. However, it also seems to lock up and block the start. Maybe it's because of the broken bushing pad or what that is. At least I couldn't make sense of it. If you know what it is and what it is needed for, please let me know in the comments. I cleaned, looked it up and assembled it as it is. The blade however needed a refresher. Uh, what is that? Nothing that can be done with an angle grinder in the flipper wheel. Since I'm doing it outside I can use the battery I wanted to use to power the gardening tools. It's a cute camping battery from the Seos with 500 watt hours of capacity and a 600 watt AC inverter. My idea was to strap this on top of the lawnmower and be independent of an AC extension cord. You probably saw in one of my last videos that it's irresponsible to let me use an extension cord. However, let's see if the 600 watts is enough for the angle grinder. Nope, it's not. The angle grinder is 750 watts, unfortunately. But wait! How about a second battery? <laughs> First rule in government spending. Why build one when you can have two twice the price? And that was actually the unique feature that was interesting to me about this battery. You can use them in parallel by daisy chaining them. Up to 4 batteries are supported. The two here can power 1200 watts which should be enough for the angle grinder now. The daisy chaining happens with the regular appliance power cord that's included. No proprietary cable is needed. To enable the mode you need the app, pair the devices over bluetooth and activate it. I wish there was a way that wouldn't require the app. On the other hand, the app provides a few monitoring features and allows you to turn on and off the AC remotely. Oh well, the grinder works now. The plan attaching the batteries to the mower turned out to not work. With one battery it strangely tries to start but fails. With two batteries the inductive load of the 1kW motor trips the protection and the batteries turn off. On top of that the motor is still locking up. If you have any ideas how to fix the mower please let me know. Otherwise I might try to cut out that clutch thingy or replace the motor with one from a washing machine. Meanwhile, I was able to score this cool hovercraft mower for 20 bucks from Kleinanzeigen, which is comparable to Craigslist here. That's a steal! Wait a minute. The only problem it had was a flipped blade. That was easy to fix. <laughs> but before we test that, I need to test if I can use those batteries with the hedge trimmers I found in the dumpster of the trash yard where I was disposing my lab garbage. Right. That black and decker thingy looks like it's from the 80s or 90s. Oh well, someone's trash is someone else's treasure. Nice. I also scored a free pressure washer which is cool, but let's take care of the jungle first. Last time I tried the trimmers I cut the cord already. However they work with the batteries so maybe I can use those somehow in the future. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh man, that was fun. I actually found old passages and stairs in the jungle that I didn't know yet. With the overgrown stairs and terraces, it's like a lost Maya temple. The capacity of the two batteries in parallel provides enough power to run the hedge trimmers for over an hour and the hovercraft lawnmower for about 45 minutes. Since the mower is rated for 1400 watts, I need to start it without any load. That can be done by tipping it to the side. Once it's running, the batteries are working hard with the cooling fans turning on, but they were able to keep up. This is cool, since I can swoosh through the garden without ever running out of power and dealing with the extension cords. The battery powered tools are so expensive, so that's an alternative. Since I'm battery man now doing all those reviews, I checked out the other features and found some really funky ones. First of all, since I also love solar, I wanted to test the DC in jack with the built-in MPPT controller. It can be used to charge the battery from the car, or even from the car plug of the other battery. However, it does not work with the barrel jack output of the other battery. It's really strange, I thought it was internally wired to the same source. But it also charges from an external DC power supply. Since the input is limited to 25 volts, I couldn't use my big solar panel with 36 volts. But I have this small 100 watt solar panel with two 18 volt sections that can be put in parallel. Back in the time I thought it was a great idea to use 4mm jacks as output connectors. I finally decided to swap these with solar connectors to be able to use it with other solar projects. To not do the crimping myself, which always somehow falls apart, I just got a pair of solar cables and cut them in the middle to use the pairs of the connectors for the two panels. Since the old cables were soldered, I took my 100 watt soldering station with the proper chunky tip to get the terminals heated. After removing the old cables, I just took a bunch of solder and keep heating the wire ends until I could see the solder creating a concave bonding puddle between the pad and the wires. I checked the voltage and the polarity. The thin end of the connector should be positive from the panel and the receptacle should be negative. That was okay. Now I can put them in series for 36 volts in parallel or 18 volts with twice the current. Because of the limit of the DC in, I used two Y cables to put the panels in parallel. And sure enough, it started okay, to charge. Okay, that works. With the 70 watts this setup was able to achieve, a full recharge would take a full day. So when using it on camping, it probably should always be hooked up to a panel during the day. But there are even more ways to recharging it. Using the regular AC, charging runs at 500 watts, which would recharge the battery in one hour. Switching through the status screens, you can see the BMS status of each individual cell, which is first of a kind for me. And even a graph for the AC input with voltage and current, which I don't find as useful. Here is another odd thing. You can even recharge it from USB-C. I never saw that on a big battery bank like this. Look at this, you could charge it from a phone charger. <laughs> or even this tiny battery bank. <laughs> what? It states that it supports up to 100 watt in and out over USB-C. However, when I try charging it from the second power bank, I only managed to get up to 60 watt. That might be limited by the USB cable. It's good enough to run my laptop and charge it at the same time, but I need to find some diagnostic tool that is capable of testing it properly. Maybe you have a recommendation for me. At about 50 watts, a full recharge from USB-C would take 10 hours, but it's still a nice gimmick. Some of you might want to know if the battery pack could be used as an UPS, or at least as an AC backup power. The answer is unfortunately no. While the AC inverter is quite capable with a nice sine wave even at full load, plugging in the AC inputs turns off the AC output for a few seconds. It switches to a pass-through mode. The AC outputs seem now to be directly fed from the input while the battery is recharging. However, when the AC input is cut off again, the pass-through is terminated but the AC output that was on before does not turn on again. This behavior rules out the use case as an UPS and also as an automatic backup power. If they can patch the firmware so the AC turns on again, it at least could be used as a backup power for aquariums and such. On the other hand, USB or DC is never interrupted. To be precise, there isn't even a way to turn off the DC output even if you want it. 
But there is one last thing that I wanted to test. You know me, I'm a maniac in regard to balancing my AC load of my home. Even though it's not mentioned anywhere, I wanted to do my obligatory microinverter test where I try to feed back the stored power to my home. All the microinverters I got here don't support 12 volts as input from solar. So I decided to put the two DC outputs from both batteries in series using the solar input cables. That should result in over 24 volts, which is in the range of the microinverter. But since these are solar input cables, I needed to flip the connectors. So I just used my Y cables. Good enough. And sure enough the microinverter came to life. I limited it to a low current draw and plugged it to the AC. It actually worked. I cranked up the current more and more, but the MPPT controller never went above 200 watts. It matched the 10 amps limit of the DC outputs from the batteries. So probably there is no hard cutoff from the battery. Yeah, that's 10 amps. Even though it's cool that that actually works, I doubt the DC jacks are made for a permanent 10 amps load. 50 degrees. If you are wondering about the noise level, it's moderate at a high load. And that's about it. So what's my conclusion about these batteries? It's a nice compact battery with the possibility to daisy chain for more current. While one battery is enough to cover the typical camping needs, two batteries already start outputting useful current for some tools. However, to run stuff like circular source and other inductive loads, you'd already need more than 1200 watts. It really depends on the use cases. If the size and weight is of relevance while being able to scale up on demand, this system certainly is an option. The AC output is smooth but has no UPS or backup mode yet. The options you got to recharge the device are crazy vast and the DC output can be used in unexpected ways. I'll be using it for my gardening with this battery backpack and certainly for camping powering my cooler or my standard puddle boat pump. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in the batteries or any other tools and parts I used, please check out the description. But also keep your eyes open for all tools that you can give a second life and make the post-apocalyptic inventor proud. Thanks to Beseos for sponsoring this video and big thanks to all my supporters. Your help really keeps me afloat. See you next time. Bye! It's a really simple and cool design. It's only one axle with this impeller that creates the air cushion while the blades cut the grass. Cool.